I, I haven't seen Jadis Richard out here recently, although the DBs have like the UDs rolled up. Is he, is he injured or what's going on there? Well, uh, that's called swag, uh, Robbie. Yeah. So I know, yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. He's out, he'll be back. We're, he's just um, you know going through a process. I expect him back either later this week or early next week. CJ Taylor had a, a car accident that from the photos looked pretty brutal. How remarkable is it that he's back out and playing well? Well, first of all, I, 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 I feel grateful, and I started yesterday's team meeting. I'm grateful to have another day with both CJ and Gumbo. They were both in the car, uh, and uh, it was terrifying. And, um, you know, it's probably the way our program responded to that. I, 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 you know, we had a number of people that um, showed up to greet them at the hospital, and, and um, you know, it was uh, one of those moments where uh, this, this becomes a family. Um, but uh, it's no, it's not shocking that both CJ and Gumbo are back because, you know, they love football and they love what we're building and they're energized to be a part of it. Um, we're lucky to have them, and I think it's a great reminder that, um, you know, that you never know. And um, certainly um, thankful for the first responders, thankful for the uh, the police department and the BUPD for helping and Vanderbilt Hospital. But luckily, those guys came out and were able to come back to practice two days later. It's pretty remarkable. You're less than three weeks away from kickoff. Uh, you always talk about uh, team need to show consistency. Are you seeing that on the offensive side now that you've had a, you know, a second week of practice? Now? Yeah, I mean, I thought today was one of our better offensive days. Um, now, again, like to say that is to, is to judge the day, and the question was around consistency. So I think it's how are we going to stack those days? How are we going to build off it? What I'm looking for from the offense is the routine play. Can we make the routine plays? Um, can we make the routine plays consistently? That'll open up the ability to be explosive. And so sometimes it's about the horizontal stretch early in a drive um, to, to tax the defense and then be able to go up top. Um, we saw that today, um, but we need to see it tomorrow. So we got to keep at it. I do think um, I'm seeing steady progress there. And, you know, we've done it in the air. I think our receiver group is stepping up and, you know, we've done it on the ground. I thought Mike had some impressive plays today. Um, and he's going to argue for more off the film because I don't know that he was always touched. But that's the uh, that's what's uh, that what comes with wearing the red jersey. But uh, pleased with the progress. Consistency, consistency is going to be about how we finish the week out. The offense seems to have won the day in the run game a lot lately. How do you evaluate that on both sides of the ball? Well, um, I think, first of all, we, as an offensive line, we're playing together. I think they're getting, um, they're, they're beating the defense, or they beat the defense to the punch today. And how that shows up to me is that you end up with defensive players down the middle of blocks. So we weren't playing on edges. We weren't cutting the ball off in our gaps. And it just allowed runs to, to bleed. I felt some of the, um, the more explosive runs were a product of both uh, execution of scheme in the uh, option game and then, you know, just, just getting some um, the pressure on the defense to soften them up. Um, there are going to be things defensively that we're going to come back to and say we have to do better. Um, and in the moment, we have to be both firmer and on edges um, and finish tackles better in space. But a good offense is going to put that pressure on you. So I'm, I'm glad to see um, – I'm glad to see that, you know, and again, I, I saw explosive uh, plays at the receiver position, at the running back position, the quarterback position. I think that, that that's um, that's where we need to be. You brought back, obviously, some pretty key contributors on both sides of the ball. But I mean, some of these younger guys, are you starting to see some, some guys out of that group that can help you? For sure. You know, I, 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 anytime you're talking about playing freshmen, I think you're always um, concerned about volume and then inevitably the, the wall that presents because this is so there's both volume of scheme and then volume of work and um, I think on the whole those guys have, have responded well to the volume of work you know when you recruit to a message and you recruit to an identity um, you know the, the transition's a little more seamless so you know these guys are here because they love football they're here because they're they're going to help build this program and so they're not shocked by the work volume and they're not shocked by you know how much time we invest in our craft here um, and so uh, we're spending less time with the team as a whole convincing them of what it takes um, and more time coaching them through uh, the process which is really good to see but certainly I think we'll continue to see the young players um, and their transition and and you know we'll have a better idea after this weekend you know who's ready to actually get out there and help us win a game
How do you evaluate Quincy Skinner's camp? I'm very positive on Quincy. I think, again, the, the, I think with that receiver group, the word consistency is going to come up a bunch. But what I see him, I see the identity he's he's starting as a player. He's a strong catcher. He's a good route runner. Um, you know, he's shown the ability to make plays in the red zone, which I think is going to need to be a signature for him. Um, you know, I, that, that those are things to, to be able to catch the ball, to catch it strong at the point. Um, he's a bigger bodied receiver that can go up and get it um, as the field space shrinks. You know, those are things that if he continues, you know, he's going to have a he's going to have a role in helping us win. So I'm pleased with his progress. You brought up Mike Wright. Do you see him taking ownership since being named the starter, taking ownership of that position? I, I see I see uh, him stepping into that role. Um, and, and, you know, we need to help guide him into total ownership there. I mean, that's a, you know, that is, I mean, you know, we're still dealing with guys that are early in on their careers. And when you look at what the owner, ownership of the quarterback position at the highest level looks like, I mean, those guys um, are impeccable in their process, impeccable in the way they respond and rally their teammates. And um, what, what I love about Mike is he's so willing and he's, he's exploring what that looks like for him. Um, and I would just say, you know, he's got the job right now of being the one so that kind of all eyes are on him. But equally as impressive has been the way Ken Seals has conducted himself in a leadership position and also A.J. Swan as a guy who is still very early in on his career, but, but uh, every day reveals a little more about what he's capable of. So I'm, I'm pleased with all three of those guys. I think when you talk about um, – you know, uh, again, ownership over leadership role, ownership over the quarterback position. That's going to be a work in progress, but those guys are willing and they're they're working towards that. You've got four defensive linemen out. Any sense of when you get those guys back? It's all it all varies. Some of them are on their way back, which is exciting. Um, you know, with Davian and, and Devin, I've kind of said this. That's going to be a little bit lengthy of a process. So those guys aren't day to day. Um, you know, with CJ and BJ, you're looking at more kind of any day now to see them come back and, and contribute. Um, you know, Braden Baps is going to be a little bit longer term. We got to see how he responds. Um, we do expect to get him back though, and, and um, hopefully in time for Hawaii, but you know, we're going to wait and see on that. Um, so they're on their way. You know, it's just uh, a matter of time. And, and with Devin and Davian, they, those guys are just on a little bit longer rehab process. Is there a cutoff date that if they're not back out here practicing at a decent speed by X date, then they're out for the open? Or how do you evaluate that? I, I think not not from a standpoint of, um, you know, th there's no like uh, threshold for us as coaches. You know, I think with, with a number of those guys, you know, they played enough football or played enough football through spring and camp where we know that they know what they're doing. Um, it's more about, you know, you know, how they're functioning in terms of their physical health and, you know, are they able to impact winning in that game? And, and that'll be a decision made by, you know, our athletic training staff and, you know, in conjunction with our coaches. So you're probably evaluating that more on the, the GPS data and stuff you get that tells you about what, what they're able to handle more so than you know we need you in practice this many days that's right it's it's all about how are we re reaching our top speeds how long can we hold those top speeds and again a guy that might normally be a starter you know, might work his way back into into playing 20 snaps you know and that's if he's impacting winning for 20 snaps we want him out there if he's not able to do that obviously then we we cater the approach according to what they can handle but that's that's what we do yes i saw something about like jeffrey Hugo and I think Savion Riley helped him some older man who had a bad accident on the street. Like, what do you know about that? Yeah, it, well, um, I'm, you know, very proud of those guys. They, they, um, they saw someone in need. They, they went to, went to his aid. They uh, stayed with him um, until help came, including, uh, you know, giving a t-shirt, giving one of their shirts up to use as a tourniquet on a wound, and, um, and then followed up afterwards too and, and I know those guys didn't do it for the the attention but um, you know I think it's a it's an example of the character of people that we have in this program and I'm proud of those guys and um, you know I just I think uh, it was a great moment for them to step up and be helpful and they, they did it. You know the guys that doing okay? Yeah you know, I don't know that I'll have to follow up on that. Yeah. They may know. Anything else?
When's oh. the cold tub? It's right now. I'm okay. going in. Okay. Usually Is head Joey first. Joey coming first? Yeah. Nice. Joey doesn't get in the cold tub. <laughs>